what's up everybody this is the professor and i want to talk to you guys today about mastering the markings you know the details of the bones some people have a lot of difficulty with all these little dots and holes and depressions on all of the bones and no offense i am totally with you on that so there are some things that i use to learn the bones myself and there are some things that i took to actually help my students learn the bones. And I want to share some of those things with you now. So I want you to keep in mind four things. Number one, identify the bone. Number two, is it a left or a right? Number three, learn the details that articulate. And number four, learn the details that have a purpose. So I'm going to take each one of those four things. And I'm going to break them down with you right now. So the first thing that I, I brought up was identifying the bone. You know, sometimes you can be in a hurry and you're trying to memorize as much of this stuff as possible. And you might, you know, allow the identification of the bone to be the last thing that you do. But trust me, identifying the bone itself needs to be the number one thing that you knock out of the box. And this is why. So I might be in a classroom and there's just this random bone that's just sitting there and a student will say, hey, what's this bone? Um, and when I first see the bone, even though, you know, I know all 206 bones of the body, I may even hesitate for a moment and say, OK, I, I don't recognize that bone right off the bat. So one of the things that I'm going to do to identify that bone is I'm going to compare that bone to something that's common because just looking at this bone by itself, I mean, it's a scapula, but when you ask yourself, does it look like a scapula? Does it look like a shoulder blade? You tell me, typically when we talk about a shoulder blade, we're talking about the shoulder on the person. So you don't see this. So I try to compare the bones to things that are really common. Like this looks like a pig's ear or maybe this looks like, um, one of those rawhide, rawhide chew toys that you give to a dog. That's what it looks like to me. And the funny thing about it is there are no other bones in the body that looks like this, that looks like a pig's ear or a chew toy. So I'm more likely to remember this bone simply because it looks like something else common that I know of. Even the vertebrae, like some of the vertebrae look like little spaceships that you will find on a video game. So when you identify the bone, relate to it with something that's relatable. Like I just told you, this looks like the ear on a pig or, or one of those chew toys, those rawhide chew toys for dogs. So that's one thing that you can do. <clears throat> and the thing about it is, if you go ahead and learn the bones themselves, that's going to build your confidence in what you know and then as you begin to build your confidence in what you know it'll allow you to be able to compartmentalize more material as you move along so number one identify the bone man just figure it look at it and say hey what bone is this and as you're trying to learn that relate it to something that's relatable um, number two figure out if it's a left one or a right one now this one can be tricky especially if you just walk up to a table and it's just sitting there like this and you're like, oh boy, I really don't know whether this is a left or a right. So this is what I do to cheat every time. Look for one or two physical attributes that allows you to figure out whether it's a left or a right, right? So every bone has notches and divots and holes and branches that make them extremely unique. And that's perfectly fine because I want to use these things to my advantage. So, for example, this is uh, the posterior view of my left and my right scapula, right? So I'm looking for things, specifics about them that, that let me know if it's a left or a right. There are two things about this that I always do with every single bone. First thing that I do before I even figure out if it's a left or right is I try to figure out the front from the back. So right now I'm looking at the posterior side of both of my scapulae. And the way that I can tell that this is the posterior or the back 
versus the front is because the back has a bar on it. And you can actually feel that bar. You can actually feel that spine on your own back. You can take your hand and you can reach back on your shoulder and you can feel that spine right there. This is the back or the posterior of my scapula. The front of your scapula is smooth and it has a shallow depression. This is a fossa, which of course the definition of a fossa is a shallow depression. Um, it's this particular fossa is known as the subscapular fossa. If you take that name and break it apart, sub means below. Scapular is referring to the scapula. Fossa means shallow depression. So I've got this little shallow depression that I can run my thumb in underneath my scapula. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, dude, you said that it's underneath the scapula. And I'm pretty sure that you just pointed to this and said this was the back and that now you're saying that this is the front. Well, yeah, your scapula rests against your back. So your ribs are like right here. And your scapula sits against your ribs. So when you say subscapular, this is underneath your scapula. It's in between the scapula itself and your ribs that this bone is actually laying against. So that makes this the front. And the reason, another reason why this is the front is because we're talking about the anatomical position of the body. And if we're looking at this from the anatomical position, you, you and the patient are always facing one another face to face. So if the patient was looking directly at me right now and I had x-ray vision, I would be looking at the anterior view of both their right and left scapula. So now that I know that this is the front of my scapula and that this is the back of my scapula, then I can say, oh, okay, well, if this is the back, then this is how it would look in my back right now. And I know that this socket is where the ball and socket for my shoulder takes place. So this little socket is there, which means that, let me get this bone here to help us out, which means that this humerus, my upper arm bone, would connect like this. And so I would have an arm here, and I would have an arm there. So having these two details stand out to me. So if you notice so far, figuring out whether or not this is a left or a right and a front and a back, I've talked about three details at this point. I've talked about the spine, I've talked about this fossa, this socket called the glenoid fossa. And if I flip this over, I've talked about the subscapular fossa. So I've already learned three details and those three details will tell me whether I'm looking at the front or whether I'm looking at the back. And if I can position them correctly, front and back, then I can tell whether or not this is a left scapula versus a right scapula. Can you see that? So that's great. So I've knocked out two, two situations here already with just three details. I know a left scapula from a right one, and I know the back from the front. I'm doing pretty good so far. So the third thing that I mentioned was that learn the details that articulate, right? Learn the details and the markings on the bones that attach to one another. It's almost like getting a two for one, because if I learn that this is the glenoid fossa, which is the socket, and that the ball that's gonna go into the socket is the head of the humerus. Then the head of the humerus articulates with the glenoid fossa. The ball articulates with the socket, just like that. And I would literally do that for every bone. Like you do that for how the humerus articulates with the scapula. You can do that for the clavicle and how it articulates with the scapula as well. Like um, 
the scapula has uh, the uh, acromion. Um, and then you have the clavicle, which has the acromial end. So you get it? The acromial end articulates with the uh, acromion. Uh, you have the sternal end of your clavicle that articulates with your sternum. All these details, there's a ton of them where they're practically named for what they attach to. So you can knock out a lot of details of the bones just by paying attention to what does it attach to. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's cool, but there's still a bunch of details that don't necessarily attach to another bone, and I have no idea what those things do. That takes a little more studying. Now, you can hold your, I'm, I'm, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but you can hold your professor accountable for telling you more about what those details are and what's attached to them. Sometimes what you'll learn about the details on some of these bones will actually be kind of interesting. For example, how many of you have ever heard of the rotator cuff, right? So you talk about the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is a bunch of tendons that come together to make this cuff around the uh, upper portion here of your humerus. And it's made up of four different muscles that literally rotate your scapula and your humerus. They rotate this shoulder area. And they attach to very specific places along the superior portion of your, or the proximal portion of your humerus and along these borders of your scapula. And so that becomes more interesting because if you like sports and you like, you know, studying quarterbacks and um, tennis players and any type of athlete, uh, gymnastics, any type of athletics that deals a lot with the shoulder, then you've got to know something about the rotator cuff. And then you can see where the muscles of the rotator cuff attach to the very details that you have to memorize for your exam. For example, this border here is known as the lateral border, which, of course, would make this the medial border. Now, can you figure out why? That's because lateral means it's going away from the midline of your body. So it's going away from the middle of your body. Medial means it's going towards the midline of your body, so it's going towards the middle this way. And you've got muscles that attach here at the lateral border. So some of these details is like, oh, these details are boring. Yeah, they are boring because, well, there's nothing being said about them. I'll give you another example. You see this point right here? This is a superior angle. The superior angle of your scapula probably doesn't mean much to you until you find out that the levator scapulae attaches to this point. And if you watched my previous video about the muscles of the head and the neck, then you saw that we talked about the levator scapulae. When you break down the name, levator means levitate or to lift. Scapulae is the scapula. It lifts and levitates your scapula. It's also known as the shoulder shrugging muscle. So when you're talking to a teenager and you say, why in the world did you do that? And they go, I don't know. And they shrug their shoulders. That muscle is the one that raises the scapula up and then lets it lower back down. And it attaches right here. And it makes sense to attach right here because when that muscle contracts and pulls, it lifts or levitates the scapula and then it relaxes and lets it go back down. So learning what's attached to some of these details and the interesting things that happen because of the muscles and the ligaments that are attached to these different details makes it way more interesting to learn rather than that's a hole, that's a ditch, that's a, that, that's a thingy sticking out of the bone. Um, and that can be pretty annoying after a while. But once you start learning, hey, this specific muscle attaches here, which causes this bone to do this and do that, then it makes it more interesting. And when you start learning things with purpose, then it sticks a lot better. So ask yourself the question or ask your professor the question, what attaches here and what does it do? I'll give you one more example, and that's the humerus here. So we've got a humerus. This would be my left humerus. This would be my right humerus. Now, I want you to just take a moment and look at this. 
This is my left humerus. This is my left upper arm. This is my right humerus. This is my right upper arm. And so here is the head of the humerus. And that's going to, of course, articulate with the glenoid fossa of my scapula. That's that magical ball and socket joint thing that we were just talking about here. So when I see this bone just sitting there on the table and someone says, hey, what bone is that? I say, oh, this is a humerus bone. Oh, well, how can you tell? Well, it, it, it looks like a, a looks like a drumstick. And so because it looks like a drumstick, I remember that this is the humerus bone. I also remember something corny about its name. It's humerus, right? So when people talk about hitting their funny bone, they're actually talking about this bone. So humerus, funny, and it ain't too funny when you hit that bone either. So those are two things that jog my memory and allow me to remember which bone this happens to be. This bone sometimes gets confused with the femur on exams. People will see this bone and they'll be like, oh, this must be the femur. And they'll write in femur and they'll get it wrong. Just take a look at how small this is. This would be the size of a femur on a small child, but this wouldn't be the size of a femur on a grown adult. This is definitely going to be in my arm because my arm is smaller than my leg. So this is going to be my humerus. I've now identified that. Now I got to figure out, okay, am I looking at the front or am I looking at the back? I check this out. I'm going to leave. This is the front. This is the anterior of the humerus. I'm going to flip this one over. They literally look almost identical. So this one can really trip people up. But let's use what we learned with the scapula and let's apply it to the humerus real quick. So I'm looking over here at the front of this humerus and I notice that there's a small indentation right there. That's another fossa. But I also notice that there's this thing that looks like a thread spool and there's a thing right there that looks like um, a, some kind of nut that's right there. And then there's a knob at the proximal end. If I compare it to here, this is all smooth. There's no knob like here. None. And this indention is pretty large. Like I can put my whole thumb in this. And as you, if you've watched enough of my videos, you can tell I got really big hands. So you can see that my entire thumb can go into this indention versus this one. I can't get my thumb into that. So if it's got a really big hole here and it's smooth at the top, then I'm looking at the posterior view. This is the back. But if I got this little knob that's pointing directly at me, and I've got only a small indention here, then that means that this is the front. And I look for those two things every time I see one of these bones in a picture or I see one on a table. So that tells me that this is the front and this is the back. And that's good to know. So now that I know this is the front, I'm going to flip this back over. How does that tell me which one is the left and which one is the right? Well, remember that if this is the front, then I'm looking at this person in anatomical position. And if you go back to the first chapters of anatomy and physiology, then you remember that in anatomical position, your arms are in this really weird position, almost like you're about to throw a bowling ball down a, uh, a, down, down an alley. And so your hands are like this. And if I show my hand with it palmed, with the palms up and out, then look down at, do, I want you to do the same thing for yourself. Hold your hand out with your palm. Now look at your arm and look at the positioning that your arm is actually in. Once you look at how your arm is positioned, that's how the humerus is now positioned. It's literally in that anatomical position. So with that being said, if the head here we know we got this in an anatomical position. We've got this as the front. If the head is pointing in this direction, then that means that that's how my arm is attached. And if that's how my arm is attached to the rest of my body, then that tells me that this is a right and this is a left. Because this is attaching to my body. So I can't have, I can't have a scapula over here 
the ball doesn't articulate with the socket, see? The scapula would have to be on that side, and this is the body side. So that would tell me that this humerus is a left humerus, and this humerus is a right humerus. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's got to be another cheat code for this one. Yes, there actually is. Let's say that you really don't have the capacity to take all of that in. You are cramming for your lab exam. You have only five minutes before they open the door and let you guys in. Here's a quick cheat. So the ball points towards the body. Always, always. It always points towards the body. This epicondyle down here, notice how prominent it is that's sticking out. The epicondyle always points towards the body as well, like this, right? So it's pointing like that, like a fork. So these two are pointing towards the body, right? To make things even better is this little knot right here. This little knot is the lesser tubercle. And the lesser tubercle is always pointing away from the body. It's always pointing forward and always pointing away from the body. It's pointing, always pointing straight ahead. So if this is pointing straight ahead and these two are pointing towards the body, then you can imagine that this has got to be a right humerus. Because if this was a left humerus, then, well, this would be really weird if this was a left humerus. If you think about it, I want you to do this for me really quick. I want you to take your hands. I want you to take your hands and put them in this position just like this, right? Do it with both hands. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate both of these bones so that they're in the same position that your arms are in right now. And as you can see, this would be a right humerus and this would be a left humerus and you see how those epicondyles are sticking towards your body the midline of your body they're medial they're pointing towards the middle and even the head of the humerus is pointing towards your body because that's how he attaches to your body and so that means that this one is a right one and this one is a left one so even if the professor just did something just plain outright evil and only showed you this much of the humerus and said something like, is this a left one or a right one? And that, that would just be really foul. But, I mean, you know, if it did get grimy like that and they were only showing this much of it, this would be your giveaway. The lesser tubercle right here. Because that lesser tubercle is always pointing away from the body and it's always pointing forward. So that would tell me that this is the front of this bone, it's pointing forward, the head of the humerus is this way, it's pointing towards my body at all times. And so if this is pointing forward and this is pointing towards my body, that means this is the front of a right humerus. And I can still pull that off. So that's all we got time for today. Stick with us, we'll have more videos in the future. Hey everybody, if you enjoyed anything about this video today, make sure that you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, leave a comment below about the content that you want to hear about next. This is The Professor. We'll check you out later. Peace.